What's up everybody, it's AJ with eTrailer.com. Today we're gonna to be checking out these jack pads from Strongberg Carlson. They're gonna come in a variety of different sizes and what they're gonna do is they're gonna either increase the footprint on your stabilizer jacks or your jacks on your rig. That means it gives a bigger footprint so if you're on gravel, you're on sand or wet ground, there's not gonna be any sinkage in there and then have an uneven rig. This is gonna make that footprint bigger so it won't sink whatsoever. Another thing it does good is it protects the concrete. You know, if your rig's a little heavier, you're worried about chipping that concrete or busting up with the weight of it, you're not gonna have that. If you have these pads underneath there, it's gonna be a nice big area of protection and you'll be good to go. Let's check it out. Now I got them all laid out here just to show you the different sizes they come in and you can see them right next to each other, seeing which one's maybe gonna work better for you. We'll start over here. This is the smaller one. This one's nine by six with a 5 8 thickness. Now this one's gonna come in a pack of four, so when you buy this, you'll get four of them. Next to it, we have the 11 by 10. This one comes in a pack of two, and it has an inch thickness. Next up, we have the 14 by 12, and this one also has a one inch thickness and it comes in a pack of two. And then last but not least, we have the 14 by 12, and it's got a two inch thickness, and it only comes with one. So if you need two of these, you're gonna have to buy two of them separately. Now I wanna kinda of show you how they work. I know that sounds silly, they just go under the pad, and you set them down on there, and you're done. But they actually interlock with each other, so if you had a couple different sizes, and you just need a little extra height, or something to even it out, you can see there's an indention on the back, that goes right over the logo itself. And then you can't move it. You see, I'm trying to push it back and forth. It's not gonna slide on here or anything like that. And plus with pressure, it's not going anywhere. Another nice touch is that they lined it up so the handles are always in line with each other. So no matter what size you put together, the handles are gonna be lined up. So when you need to pull them out, you can pull them out easily. That grip's always gonna be there for you to use. Now you see behind me, we have two of the bigger ones and one of these. So pretty much like I just had. You can line up on that one with the smaller one. Again, handle still fit just fine. And even on the thickest one over here, we'll set that on top of there. Same thing, still hand grip open, still catches. I'll try and push it back and forth. It's not moving on me. So that just lets you know that if you do use different combinations of these to get that height you need, or more stabilization that you need, it's gonna be fine, it's not gonna slip on you. Once we're inside here, you can kinda of see what the smaller one, the six by nine one, is better used for. This foot on our enclosed trailer is a little smaller than the ones on our rig outside, and this is about the only thing we could find really that it would fit with, but to expand that footprint even bigger, you see that it is bigger than the normal foot here. We went ahead and added one underneath that way it's got a way bigger footprint and there won't be any sinking if we park it on loose gravel or sand or something like that. Now let's see what it takes to make sure we get the right size. I'm gonna hold up this 11 by 10 up to the nine inch foot here and just show you. Looks like it covers up pretty well. You see some of the foot hangs over this gap where the handle would be, which is probably fine, but I would rather just go up one more size, the 12 by 14. And you can see you have much more room here. This makes the footprint bigger, like I keep saying, so it's less likely they shift around on you. You might be wondering how does the 10 by 11 not fit that nine inch foot? Well, I'm gonna measure it out for you to show you that the measurements include the handle part. So that could be a little deceiving. That's how you get your 11. So really it comes here to nine. So then it's, that's what's causing that overhang there. There's a few different RV pads out there, different styles of them. The ones we were working with are the rubber ones. There's also plastic ones, and some people just straight up use a two by four. I saw a bunch of different DIY things on YouTube of people making their own. I think the rubber is the best way to go. And you know, if you use a wood block that's easy, 
but that's not going to last you very long. That's going to get moisture in there. That wood's going to fail or start to break apart when you least expect it. It's just not good to use those. I would just get rid of that. The plastics, now those are heavy duty. Those will hold up just fine. I'd be worried that they would crack or something or break when I drop them. I mess with some of the stackers and they seem pretty sturdy and all, but I, I kind of just like the thick rubber instead. I know it's not going to break. It's not going to chip away. It's not going to crack. It's going to hold up. It's bendable. The elements aren't going to bother it. I just think this is the way to go for if you want to buy something that's going to last you a long time. The other thing you might not think about is how easy it is to clean these off. You know, they have the plastic ones. They usually have more going on on top. They have more texture to them. That means it's going to collect that dirt or whatever. Like, so like I said, the wet ground or the gravel, it might collect more of that and be harder to clean off when you go to throw it in your basement doors. This one's rubber. It's not going to collect anything. It's not going to get any of that moisture in there. You're not going to have to worry about that. Like what you have to do with like a wood block, which like I said, that's going to absorb that moisture and then it's going to fail and break down on you. That's not going to happen with this. So you don't even have to worry about it. We're out here on a gravel road just to show you what I'm talking about. Now I've said it multiple times, the loose gravel that easily moves when you go to set your feet down there. It's going to move stuff around. It's going to shift on you. This is going to help you with that. Drop the pad down. You can see, kicking it with my foot, trying to move it. it does not move as easily and it's nice and even. It's going to even out all those points that you don't normally have if it's kind of shifting around underneath you. I can stand on here. It's not shifting that much. I'll move around on it, show you it's not skidding. It's not going anywhere. Another thing to think about with the plastic versus the rubber is that, you know, the rubber is going to actually maybe, out of lack of a better term, conform or like grip the gravel better when you're pushing on it because it's rubber. The plastic one's not going to have that. It's not going to have any give. It's going to stay rigid. And as you push down on it or maybe push down from the side, it might start to slide over a little bit on you and you don't want that happening. And that's it for the jack pads from Schomburg Carlson. Again, I think they're all going to work really well. They have come in a different, bunch of different sizes, so you can get the one that's best suited for you. They're way better than the plastic, and of course, everything is better than using a wood block. So these are going to be way better than those two options, and they're really going to help you out. Thanks for hanging out. I hope this helped.